if you want to have vibes and hits you got to be like ice spice or you got to be like sexy red but if you're not skillfully doing it then you might just be a one-hit wonder i told him that i'm a little busy he said okay i'm in your city <laughs> I like to be very ter territorial. I like to be very territorial over my artists. Like once I find an artist, I don't want nobody else to be saying, oh, what you know about this person? This is my person, back up. Just like nobody was on lucky day when I was on lucky day. And now y'all all on lucky day. And I don't appreciate that. One, I'll add like one to two songs here and there. But I'm telling you, if you graduate to getting added to my music library, that's really an honor. There's a time for vibes and there's a time for substance. And I feel like it's 90% vibes and 10% substance. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. And today, I don't know why I feel so violated without my AirPods in my ears, I feel a little naked. I feel like AirPods are kind of like a part of my wardrobe, my daily wardrobe, because I'm always listening to something. But today I want to talk about why I feel the music industry is going downhill. Um, <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about is music production. So basically, I feel like it starts with the music production. And I find myself listening to a lot of 80s and 90s music because it definitely just feels more soulful. And that's why I have an addiction to Tiny Desk concerts. And you should too. But basically, I just feel like in the 80s and the 90s, first of all, let's just start with the fact that we had the instruments in the studio and we're doing, okay, take one, take two, take three, take four. We had live instruments and we had musicians. And if you want to collaborate with another artist, that artist going to have to get on the plane, come to the studio that you're at and record in the studio with you so i think that being in the studio having the musicians and the live instruments versus now people are selling like production kits and there will be like basically presets for all of the instruments you could ever think of people singing every single note. They have some little uh, presets where you can have like a, a choir. There's just like a lot of stuff. So I think the live musician and instrument aspect compared to now where a lot of things are just push a button for this note, push a button for this instrument. I think that is a big change. Um, next, I think radio is just not what it used to be. And for me, I don't like listening to the radio because the ads really put a damper on the flow of listening to music. So it really does bother me that you listen to maybe four or five songs, then they go on commercial break for like 10 minutes. So then I find myself flipping through the channels, trying to find something else to listen to. And then also with the radio thing, it feels like they have the same songs put into a rotation. And sometimes it's even really bad to the point where the same song will be playing on two or three different stations. And I think that's a problem. I think, I feel like the radio is underutilized as a marketing tool when it comes to music because everybody's playing the top 10 
let's say it's R&B, all the R&B stations are going to be playing the top 10. All the hip-hop stations are going to be playing the top 10. And it's just kind of like regurgitating and playing the same thing over and over. And then it's really unfortunate because it is, it's usually on the radio where a song will get overplayed. Like that song, um, song with Future and um, the other girl. Like I feel like I hear that song every five seconds and I'm kind of annoyed at it. And anytime I hear like certain songs, it's just like, okay, it's been two years. It's been two years since the song came out and I'm hearing it like 20 times a day. So I feel like the radio could be like, I feel like the radio would be better if they did more like audience call in and request some like stuff that isn't being promoted because in the, in back, back in the day, they would like, a person would start their whole music career from their song getting played on the radio. There's the, there's the radio, there's the live instrumentation. And then for me also, I think it's like the storytelling aspect at times for me personally. I do feel like because like Tupac is one of my favorites and like when I'm listening to his music, I really feel like I'm there. Like he really takes it there cause you know, he's my dude. So my dude gotta do what my dude gotta do. But Tupac is really good with storytelling and sometimes what's an example of one song where I'm just like, what are you even talking about? So for for example, the the Lil Uzi song. Well, I haven't looked at the lyrics. I do not know what he is saying. I just know I just want to rock. Body yada yada. Shawty got the body yada yada. But what are we actually like? There's a time for vibes and there's a time for substance. And I feel like it's ninety percent vibes and ten percent substance. And. I feel like that could potentially be a hindrance because everybody's looking for the vibes, the vibes, the vibes, the vibes, and the vibes are usually not something that's gonna like carry you long term. Like if you want to be like a little one hit wonder, then yeah, that's the vibes. But if you're gonna be like that, you gotta be Ice Spice. You wanna you wanna be vibes, 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 hips, 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 hips. hips. If you want to have vibes and hits, you got to be like Ice Spice or you got to be like Sexy Red. But if you're not skillfully doing it, then you might just be a one hit wonder. Oh, something I also wanted to mention was, I think that a lot of record labels are changing the ways that they set up their contracts. So I feel like there are more creative ways to fulfill the contract or the obligation on the artists in now than before. And I think a lot of artists are kind of like, okay, I signed to this label, I'm required to give them two albums and five music videos. So I'm just going to BS this first album because I'm, I'm really not feeling any musical inspiration right now. But this is the this is the deadline. Like, this is my job. I need to have my stuff together. So they'll just be like, OK, I'm going to BS this album, get it out. Boom. That's me fulfilling my contract versus having the actual like musical inspiration or being inspired to create. I feel like being inspired to create is going to result in a very different outcome than just oh my record label said that i have to do two albums and five music videos so i'm just fulfill this requirement so i can get my i can get the cut of my check um and that's something that's just like at that point they tell us 
you know, people that have nine to fives, like don't work too hard at your nine to five because why would you work too hard? So I kind of do see it in that aspect of like, okay, I'm just gonna get this over with. But at the same time, that's your name on it. Like if I'm working at my nine to five and my nine to five is Dunkin' Donuts, then okay, I'm not gonna work too hard at, you know, making the drinks very caramely and making sure that the whipped cream is perfect on all of the cappuccinos. Like, I'm gonna be mid, you know? I'm gonna be very nice, customer service on 11, but is there a need to go above and beyond if you're working at Dunkin'? Like, should you be acting like you're working at Starbucks? If it's Dunkin', maybe not for a $13 an hour rate. So it's like, I do understand that aspect of like, do what you gotta do to get by. But like I said, the nuance of having your name on it, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't wanna put out just anything if I had my name on it. But that is an, an aspect of the music industry. And um, I do feel like I have to search for good music and that's very very frustrating as somebody who's very interested in quality music production i feel like i have to literally go on a search i gotta go to soundcloud i gotta go deep into those apple music playlists and i know a lot of people are on the spotify wave but the way that my apple music subscription is paid for and i'm on that family plan right I'm gonna have to see Spotify when, when she can fit in the budget. But for me, it's just like, I feel like I'm constantly like, uh, I have nothing to listen to. All the music on my playlist, I added it from like 2018, 2019. And I just like add one, I'll add like one to two songs here and there. But I'm telling you, if you graduate to getting added to my music library, that's really an honor. Like you should be really, really thankful and grateful. Um, yeah, so just like, I don't know if you guys have any perspective on this situation, but I just always revert back to my 80s and my 90s music because there's only, not there's only, but like to my knowledge and to these specific scenarios where I don't have to like go out and search for the stuff that I like. There's only a few people that are broadcasted to the public that are doing like certain genres and it can get a little, it can get a little redundant. It can get a little redundant. And also I feel like everybody is trying to sound like somebody. Everybody's trying to sound like somebody. And for some reason, I don't know if it's the music executives at the top being like, your stuff has to fit in a certain category so we can say, okay, you're pop, okay, you're R&B, okay, you're SZA and the, um, what do they call them? The whisper singers. Um, but then when you got the whisper rappers like Callie, got a white boy on my roster. He be feeding me pasta and lobster. <laughs> Put me back on Tuesday, like what you doing, babe? Let me take you shopping. I told him that I'm a little busy. He said, okay, I'm in your city. <laughs> but yeah, you have like the whisper rappers, then you have like the, there's so many categories. And it's unfortunate that we feel like there has to be a category because it really doesn't. Just do what you want to do. And people will start listening to your stuff, especially with like, I'll be on TikTok, maybe like, I'm promoting my music, I'm posting my, I'm posting my music video 20 times a day until I get traction. You know, you'll get, you'll get there somehow, you know, or you want to go the um, YouTube ad route. Like, I, I heard a lot of good music on the YouTube ads. They be, they be with it, they be with it. But overall, I just find myself getting very, frustrated with the fact that I turn on the radio they're playing the same songs over and over again sometimes I don't want to hear just vibes 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 sometimes I want to hear substance and I feel like I have to go search and I feel like it shouldn't be a process where we should have to search for 
good music and I, it's, it's, it's just annoying and I I like to be very ter territorial I like to be very territorial over my artists like once I find an artist I don't want nobody else to be saying oh what you know about this person this is my person back up just like nobody was on lucky day when I was on lucky day and now y'all all on lucky day and I don't appreciate that but then again you know he is like 40 so y'all can do what you gotta do but yeah I think that's all I have because I don't like to be on here just like trying to force things to come out so if you can relate if you have a difficult time finding music that you like give me advice please 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 because I'm tired of feeling like I have to search to get decent content all right bye